So here we are with Bob Bloomer, one of our oldest and dearest friends at the cookbook store. I'm your oldest friend. Wow, that was my friends. Well, we've been How open 27 years. Yeah. And do you remember the first time I met you, you threw a party in that wonderful coach house. Yes, I remember. And that. do you remember that? And you were cooking stuff, I think it was even in the dishwasher. Probably. Do you remember that? It was great. So, I mean, here we are. Now, I must admit, I was always calling your book Glutton for Eating because that's what I think, right? But I re somebody finds it, Allison, it's pleasure, not eating. But you are a big eater. You, you travel to eat, you eat, you eat, you eat. But it's yeah, fun, I and I also think it's great pleasure, so it is an appropriate title. So tell us about the new book. Well, though. you know, that's a play on words because the title of my television show is Glutton for Punishment. Yeah. So the new book, though, is great. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not wacky. Everybody's going to think, oh, you're going to be eating all these crazy things and cooking with them in the book. But it's not like that at all. No, actually, it? almost all my recipes start with... Uh, basic ingredients you get at any grocery store yeah. and then I put them together in ways that create really bold flavors and sometimes I finish them off with a whimsical presentation. Yeah, because I remember the one you always love. I know you still, are you a dessert person yet? I noticed you do have desserts in you, but you were never dessert for a long time. Well, I was always a dessert person, I just wasn't into cooking, cooking desserts. Dessert? Yeah, and I don't bake because that's an alchemy kind of thing and that's too complicated for me. <laughs> and you're just a, a more free spirit kind of guy. Just a simple kind of yeah. guy. Yeah. Now, but tell us though, Cooking today versus because you've been writing cookbooks a long time. You've been in the yeah, community. Yeah, my first book came out 18 years ago, See, almost it. two decades. I am. Well, you I see, am. You are. You are friend. Friend. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But do you notice a difference in, in people's um, you know expectation of recipes, perhaps an expectation of food that they're more educated or they're just more. They travel a lot more. They read a lot more about it. Do you find them more demanding now? Definitely. There's no question that um, you know with the Food Network and mm -hmm. and. Um, just a heightened consciousness that people are, they just, they know so much more about food. I, mean, I have friends who can send their like four year old kid to the fridge and say, get me the camembert. And they've got like four cheeses wrapped up in cellophane, not even yeah. marked. And the kid knows what Which the camembert one? is. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's huge. That's very, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I spent, like, I lived my entire youth on lettuce and tomato sandwiches on white toast. On white bread. With yeah. butter. That was it. Yeah. Like, not even any bacon. Probably margarine, too. It wasn't even purely butter. No, we have butter. No, I didn't uh, uh, But yeah, you're right. So there's, it's just, it's different now. I mean, not all kids are like that, and it's unfortunate. You know, some kids still are just those fussy eaters like I was, but the, it, it's starting there, and then everyone's, you know, getting older, and, and then, you're right, also, people are going on these culinary vacations, and I go, when I travel, yeah. it's always revolves around food, or um, what I like to talk, like to call alcotourism, where I go visit Alco wineries. Alcotourism, I and, love and it. Wineries and oh, distillers like and stuff like that. So, well, tell me, though, do you think people are cooking more, though? Like, there's a stand of a genuine interest in it. They seem to be extremely knowledgeable. Do you think they're actually getting in there and cooking? We are, we are asked this all the time. Right. I'm intrigued to hear what you said because you've been at it a long time. You well, travel a lot. I don't always climb through the television set into people's living rooms to know. I mean, I think that they are. The real question is, um, like, how many are they cooking more meals in total than they were cook right. cooking before? Because I know that people are definitely having lots of dinner parties. Yes. And cooking to entertain their friends. I don't know if on the other six nights of the week on the they're basis. getting like takeout stuff or um, cooking at home, but. One of the things that, like, in my little book here, which is actually a big book, it's three it's pounds, big, you know, I, oh, I shook out, like... Oh, trust me, we were slugging the boxes earlier, right? <laughs> and it's big, and it's beautiful and glossy, it's wonderful. Uh, so I have, there's different sections, and I, I have my surreal food section, so that, for example, is a lamb cupcake. Right. But I have a section called a, a man in his pan, and it's basically yeah. just things you can do in a saute pan really quickly. So this is what I do when I come home from work. Well, I actually work in my own house, if I happen to be at home. Okay. Um, saute pan, I take two saute pans. First one, chop up a couple strips of bacon, chop, 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 throw it in the pan, let it render. Bacon gets a bit crispy, a bit of the fat renders. And then I take two or three ears of corn, stand them up in the pan, go just like that, cut the kernels yep. right into the pan, throw in a bit of garlic, chili, cilantro, whatever I have around. Toss that around for a while. International Sign Language for yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that takes like five or seven minutes. Yep. And then over in this pan, I take a piece of uh, skin on fish, yep. a small piece of fish, skin side down, cook it till it's nice and crispy, also about five minutes, and then put that on top of my succotash. Super delicious, that's super fast. fresh, not more than 10 minutes no. start to finish. And just two pots too. Yep, and that's it. And then the other thing I, I talk about in the book is um, setting the kitchen up. My kitchen is set up so I walk in, it's like in a ready state of alert, like it's armed and dangerous the second I walk in. <laughs> so many people have like, they have to start taking things out to start right. cooking, they, um, you know, and, and then when they're cooking it's so inefficient, they go to empty the gar, or they go to take the cuttings and put it in the garbage, and the yeah. garbage is under the sink, yeah. you know, so you got your cuttings, you go into the sink, 
you got to open the door with your knee, and you got to lift the yeah. lid with your elbow, you know, and all this. And yeah. It's as opposed to just taking the garbage out and putting it by okay. your feet when you start. And there's lots of things you can Little do to tips. make yeah. it, your cooking more efficient, make it easier to cook. So if you're going to spend 10 minutes cooking, you're spending 10 minutes cooking, not five minutes right. getting your act together. And, then. and prepping and getting your kitchen ready. Armed and dangerous, I like that. And, and so when you can cook like that and cook really fast yeah. and very um, satisfying meals, then you're more inclined to say, hey, let's just, let's eat, right. you know, let's go home and cook for 10 minutes as opposed to stopping on the way and getting Picking something way out for dinner. And What's blah, blah, your favorite blah. ingredient? Today. Burgundy. Oh, well, no, the alcotourism, all right. But then you were at Romani Conti. Hard not to be. Uh, That's true. There you go. What, what, no, let me, okay, let me rephrase it. What, what do you think is overrated in, in a cuisine or ingredient? Okay, here's what really pisses me off. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. What pisses you off? <laughs> Nothing pisses me off yeah. more than going to a nice restaurant, saying to the chef, cook whatever. Cook whatever. And what do you get? You get truffles and you get foie gras. I mean, any five-year-old can take truffles and foie gras and make a meal taste yeah. good. Show me somebody who can take simple. some simple vegetables yeah. and turn them into something that's really amazing. Yeah. That's what I call cooking. Well, I think simple is hard to do, isn't it? It's hard, and especially with young chefs, to not go overboard when they're doing stuff. It's, but it's, simple it's, is good. Simple is tasty. Yeah, I don't really think it's cook. hard to do. I think. I mean, I just had. Um, I'm a big fan of the the restaurant down at the Drake and yep. I know the Drake's kind of you know trendy and all that I, but the kitchen there is so amazing and all their dishes are really flavorful I had a salad actually if the truth be known I had a club sandwich with french fries and my girlfriend had this, this salad with bruschetta but I ended up stealing most of her salad they had the most beautiful greens yeah. um, salad greens but not just your like classic masculine but somehow it seemed like it had it just felt the greens felt earthy right. they were a little bit larger and just like, I don't know, you just felt like you were eating right out of the soil. Right obviously. out of the soil and that they really had the, they were like yeah. of the soil. And it was just simply dressed with a, a you know, a basic vinaigrette, probably some very nice olive oil. And yet it was so tasty. It's something you had a fresh it carrot. So it's almost great. the dirt, you can feel the dirt still on it or totally. something. Totally. Like and, and so that was so satisfying yeah. yet there were, you know, none of this truffle foie gras yeah. crap, none of this complicated stuff, not but finished with butter and <laughs> cream. Actually, you know, I'm really not a fan of that stuff no. anyway. But, um, but I do, I just really respect when someone takes simple ingredients and they they just bring them to life. It's, just, it's a, a show of confidence, I think, in their own cooking and their own totally. simplicity. And the, and the confidence in the ingredients, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bob. Terrific. Congratulations. Oh, well, See you, you. Uh, for another 18 years? Absolutely, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you should be doing this for a living. <laughs> no, you're good.